Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Bulged Girl. When my girlfriend, 23 female, is mad at me, 25 male, she talks to other dudes. I'm getting to the end of my rope. I have been dating my current girlfriend for about 6 months now. She is one of my first girlfriends because when I was younger, I never really pursued a girlfriend but did have hookups here and there. But over the course of the 6 months we have been hanging out, I take her places and buy her things because I want to. But whenever we get into an argument, she always texts other dudes. And we had a bad one argument where I told her we should see other people and she told me that dudes text her all the time and she wouldn't be alone. The next day she apologized and said she wanted to be with me. I accepted but I told her that things needed to change. Yesterday I told her that I was going to drop her off at home because she got off work at 11 p.m. and I have to be at work by 8 a.m. Soon as I told her we joked around for a bit like getting sick of me already, huh? It's okay, I'll just find someone else to cuddle with. I chuckled and moved on, but when I went to leave to go back to work, she started crying and when I picked her up at night, she questioned whether I cared about her and was in tears the whole time. I told her I did and I just wanted to get some sleep and have her sleep in because she doesn't have to wake up as early as I do. And she had been staying at my house almost every day and I wanted to take a day or two off and see her all day when I got off of work on Wednesday. But when I went to pick her up last night, she was visibly upset because she had a rough day at work and she hates her new job. I tried to console her and told her I'll help her find something better but she asked to go back Tuesday and told me that if she wasn't coming back to my house she was going to go somewhere else because she didn't want to go back to hers to be depressed by herself. Her parents are emotionally abusive. On the way home she was talking to a dude she knows I do not like and who has been aggressively pursuing her. She shows me all the text messages he sends her and has been honest with me about what he has said. So, so far I haven't had much to say about him except I don't like him. After what she told me yesterday though, I have a feeling she's going to go hang out with him. If she does, I'm going to tell her that if she does, the relationship is over. If she doesn't, then I will see her Wednesday and hopefully it smooths over. Am I being crazy here or should I be concerned? Yikes, OP, this sounds like a toxic relationship from both ends. It sucks that your girlfriend's parents are emotionally manipulative, but she's doing the exact same thing to you. And you thinking about that threat of an ultimatum, that doesn't make things any better. Now, regarding this guy that's actively pursuing her and sending her all these messages that she shows you, so she's being super open and honest, instead of telling him to stop messaging her that she's not interested and, you know, moving on or blocking him, she keeps allowing for his messages to come in and then shows them to you. To which, of course, you freak out and feel uncomfortable and you don't like him, but she doesn't do anything else about it except keep showing you the messages that will keep coming in because she doesn't shut it down. And on your end, since you don't like this guy, you're gonna tell her that if she hangs out with him, then it's over. That's basically an ultimatum. You shouldn't need that trigger to get out of a relationship that is clearly not good for either of you. Additionally, you're only 6 months into the relationship, which in my opinion means it can only get worse. So OP, if I was in your shoes, I would just tell your girlfriend you guys aren't compatible, you are not a good couple and the relationship has to end. And what do you guys think about this whole thing? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Bacon Lover says, This is too much drama for a six month relationship. She knows what pushes your buttons and she is unwilling to stop. Don't threaten to leave her. Leave her. If you were doing something that you knew hurt her feelings, you would stop doing it, right? She knows this hurts you, yet she keeps doing it. What does that tell you about her? She pitches an emotional fit because she doesn't like her job and she doesn't want to be without you for a day. She has a lot of maturing to do before you'll see any relationship with her without this drama. Get out. Cheese Borito says, Nothing about this is healthy. Everyone hates their job once in a while and it's not a good excuse to enable guys who aggressively chase her to continue to do more of the same. What happens when she's upset over something worse and you aren't around? And Opie responds, This is what I'm worried about the most. What if I'm not home for like a week and she gets depressed? She can't handle it herself because when she does, she drinks heavily. And then she gets angry and I can't deal with her either. 
Hawknight88 says, quote, And we had one bad argument where I told her we should see other people and she told me that dudes text her all the time and she wouldn't be alone. End quote. This is two things. One, she feels comfortable with a backup plan. It's for her own crappy self-esteem. Two, she uses it to manipulate and hurt you so that you do what she wants. Quote, when I went to leave to go back to work, she started crying, and when I picked her up at night, she questioned whether I cared about her and was in tears the whole time. End quote. Lol, you can't even go to work without her crying. She's 23, dude, not 8. Quit giving into her immature crap. And OP responds, Over the past month or so, I haven't been putting up with her crap because, like I said, I am at the end of my rope. I already told her before we should see other people, and I put my foot down. When she came back to me, I thought things were going to change because she told me, I want to be with you, and that things would change. Things changed for a bit, but it's stupid crap like this that makes me see how immature she really is. If I try to bring up an issue I have with her or her coming over too much, I'm met with immediate attitude and backlash. Is this effing normal? Additional information from OP's comments. I'm at the end of my rope with her. She told me she wanted to be with me, but her actions show otherwise. In my mind, if she wanted to be with me, she wouldn't talk to these other dudes at all. I understand some of them are friends, but some of them are ex-boyfriends that I don't like. And to continue to talk to an ex that's actively pursuing her and whom I've told her I don't like? To me, it shows that she doesn't give a crap. Now, I talked to her the day she came over to apologize, and I told her what she did really hurt and made me uncomfortable. She apologized and said she chose me over all of them, so I gave it another shot to see if crap would change. Regarding the day I took her home, I didn't want her to stay with me because I have two other roommates and she had been coming over and staying nearly every day for a week. I know some of it is my fault because I always went to pick her up, but she isn't a resident there and my roommates have brought up the issue of her staying the night all the time. And I also had to be at work early the next morning and she didn't, so I dropped her off so she could get some sleep and not wake up with me at 6am. And I do need to note that she wasn't upset the whole day until I told her I was going to drop her off. That's when the crap hit the fan. Alright, well the community is telling OP exactly what I thought they would, which is, dude, you need to get out of this relationship, it is not good for either of you. Now, in his context and in the post, OP mentioned he told his girlfriend, or I don't know what it is now, that they should see other people and put his foot down, but then he kept dating her, so he didn't really put his foot down that way. In any case, we've got two updates from OP, so let's continue with the first one. Last night, my girlfriend and I were hanging out at my house. Everything was fine and I dropped her off at night because I had to work in the morning and she had to wake up early. As I stated in the previous post, she had an ex-boyfriend whom she stopped speaking to for a while. This ex-boyfriend has now resurfaced and last night when I dropped her off, she hung out with him. And I know because I have been suspicious of this dude since we started dating. So I got creative and have texts to show that she hung out with him last night around 12.30am without my knowledge. I went to her house this morning to hang out with her before I went to work and I asked her if she had spoken to this dude. Let's call him Jay. I had been asking her about Jay frequently because I do not like him or trust him. And I've told her before I was uncomfortable with her texting him or hanging out with him. She told me that he had texted her last night and then I asked her if she was hanging out with him again. And that is when the crap hit the fan. As soon as I asked, she told me no, she hadn't and immediately tried to turn the tables on me. Accusing me of being suspicious for no reason and started going through my phone and said, I tell you everything dudes text me because I feel guilty about it. I gave her my phone because I had nothing to hide. She found messages from an old fling I had a while back that she had told me not to speak to. And several times she said, Next time a dude messages me, I won't give him an excuse, I'll just hang out with him. And, you're awfully friendly with her, I hope you like her because she might be your only hope. Some of the messages I told her about and some I did not, that's on me. She of course got angry and told me over and over how she couldn't trust me and why I was talking to her when she told me not to. 
This girl sent me a message over Facebook asking a computer question. I answered her and was friendly with her because I had nothing against the girl and we chatted back and forth for a bit. And at one point she asked me to hang out. I gave her an excuse and didn't text her much after that. I told her I had a girlfriend but it was later in the conversation. After my girlfriend was done yelling at me, I texted the girl in question that I had a girlfriend I cared about very much and we couldn't speak anymore. What troubles me the most is how the tables turned very quickly the moment I bring Jay up. And instead of arguing with her, I sat there and took it because I didn't want to argue with her because I knew she lied to me already and that anything I said would have fallen on deaf ears. And was what appeared to me that she was hiding something and got mad at me to put the situation in her favor. As with our previous arguments, she proceeded to call me a liar, a douchebag, etc. I had to go to work so I couldn't keep talking to her about this but I've been thinking about this whole conversation and to be honest, I agree. I shouldn't have talked to this girl but she shouldn't have been talking to Jay. When I asked her why she was talking to him, she told me that I never told her to stop and said, you're uncomfortable with it? What does that even mean? I told her it means that I didn't like it and that alone should have been enough for her not to do it. Not the case. I frankly hope she just dumps me so she can feel like she won and I can move on and away from her and from the sounds of it, she's either going to do that or just continue to talk to Jay and other dudes while we are dating. I'm literally at the end of my rope and everything was fine until last night until I discovered she had lied to me about hanging out with Jay. Opie's edit. I read every single post, good and bad, and I truly thank you all for your advice. I heeded the advice of some Redditors here and just picked up a gym membership to better myself. And later, when I see her, I'm going to end it. I'm simply going to tell her that I am no longer happy and think we should go our separate ways. She will be pissed and berate me some more, but the only thing I will have left to say to her is please get your things and leave. Also, I plan on going no contact. I'm not gonna end up like the other dudes she keeps on the leash. Again, thank you. Wow, this relationship really got toxic and OP, no, everything was not fine until you discovered she lied to you. Everything was wrong from the beginning. It's good to know the Redditors knocked some sense into you because your plan of waiting for her to dump you was horrible. Anyway, let's now move on with the update to see if OP followed through and how the story ends. Yesterday I was talking to her off and on and was just keeping her talking enough to get over to my house later. When I got off of work, I picked her up and when we got to my house, I told her I don't think we should see each other anymore. And like in the past, when I brought up an issue, I was expecting an argument. But it went quite well in my opinion and all she said was okay. When she asked me why, I told her it just wasn't working anymore and she went on to say, Is it because you're a liar? Again, I said it just wasn't working anymore and she said again, Is it because you constantly lie? And this time, I ignored her and just let her pick her things up. After we smoked a cigarette in silence and I dropped her off back at her house, said goodbye and haven't spoken to her since. And the funniest thing about it all is right after I dumped her, she already began talking to yet another ex, so I know I did the right thing. She might try to get me to come over to talk and drag me back in but just like last time she will just berate me and blame me and I'm done being an effing doormat for her. I did everything for her and I got crapped on in the process. I'm just effing done. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off of my shoulders and I thank you all for your support and advice. Some were mean but I feel those were the ones that really pushed this forward and I'm going to try to stop being a doormat for everyone to walk on. I'm sick of it and it makes me unhappy so I'm going to do something about it. Again, thank you all. I'm going to be having a party this weekend with my bros who I have hardly spoken to or hung out with since I began dating her because she didn't like any of them and it feels effing fantastic. Well P, good for you for getting out of a toxic relationship and growing a spine. That is going to be a very useful tool for you in the future. So at this point I'll say all the best to you OP and take care. Thanks for sharing. Now let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Terrific Moose. You want me to F off? Okay, I guess the lab just wasted $4,000.
This happened during my first career when I worked as a scientist in a diagnostic lab. I had been working for about two years at this point and had just been promoted to senior scientist. I had two supervisors in my section, each assigned to oversee half of the tests being done in our small corner of the lab, Rory and Tanya. Tanya was the senior supervisor of the two and secondary to my department head. She had the most authority over me on any given day. She also hated me. Never did figure out why, but she hated about three quarters of the people working in the lab, so I never took it personally. I just don't think she liked people. The lab tends to attract people like that, funnily enough. We always used to joke about being the rejects stuffed in a hole at the bottom of a hospital to be kept away from the general public. As for Rory, it's important to know that he had a very good reputation in the lab for never lying. He was never caught once in even a half-truth and he'd been working there for over 30 years. He was well-liked and well-trusted. This will be important later. One day I was doing one of the more technically challenging tests that our department performs. It's long, fiddly, expensive and easy to screw up. Only senior scientists are allowed to do it unsupervised, and this was maybe the second time I've done it alone. We're talking two days just to get it set up. It was a nightmare. While I was measuring out some gelatin powder into a beaker, I accidentally elbowed Tanya. Our workstations were right on top of each other. This happened at least four or five times a day with everyone. I apologized and go back to what I was doing, but she flips out like full-on rage, screaming in my face, kind of angry. After a couple of minutes of her tirade, she says, Just F off, OP. No one wants you here. And then she storms off to her office to cool off. Rory comes up to me, having seen and heard the whole thing, and asks if I'm alright. I say, I'm a little shaking, but nothing too bad, and get ready to continue my work. But Rory had heard the whole thing, and he saw what test I was doing. He whispers to me, Your supervisor told you to go. Best you do as she says, and if she causes a fuss about it, I'll be sure to tell the boss exactly what she said to you. Now, I knew Rory's reputation, so I knew I'd be safe. I also know that being told to leave early by a supervisor meant that I was still paid out for the rest of the day, provided I had worked at least four hours of my shift. The lab was actually pretty generous with time off, even if the pay and working conditions were crap. So I did exactly what Tanya had said. I effed off home. Now, at the stage I was at with this particular test, I had spent about $4,000 worth of reagents. Normally, batches of 20 samples are run to try and keep the cost down, but it was still an expensive test when you include the nearly three days of work from a single scientist. This was one of Tanya's tests, and therefore Rory was not required to ensure it was done. No one in my section was very happy with Tanya, and she had gone off to her office and so couldn't see me leave. So no one went to tell her that the test was left unsupervised. Apparently, she didn't come back for over an hour and by then the test was ruined and had to be started over again. My boss was pissed. Tanya, of course, tried to throw me under the bus saying I had left without informing anyone and that it was all my fault. But good old trustworthy Rory told the boss exactly what Tanya had said. I love Rory. I couldn't be punished for doing exactly what my supervisor had told me to do, so I got away with it completely. Unfortunately, nothing overly terrible happened to Tanya. She got formally reprimanded and had to take an anger management course that the hospital runs, but otherwise, she got no real punishment. She never yelled at me again and was always careful to word things just right around me after that, though, so that was something. As for what I did on my half day off, I went to the beach to enjoy the sunshine I almost never got to see working in the deep dark dungeon that is the average hospital lab. I made sure to bring in the pictures the next day. Well Opie, it's all on her. She told you to go, you went and had a nice beach day, so good for you. Thanks for sharing Opie. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.